Okay, today we're gonna get started with uh, using derivatives to analyze functions. And we're gonna start with a very simple observation that's gonna be really important and basically like give us the rest of our results if we pay attention to it closely enough. So the derivative tells you the slopes of the tangent lines. Okay, we know that. If the derivative is positive, then that tells you that a function is what? Well, if the slope of a tangent line is positive, it tells you that that function is increasing, which means as you move from left to right, it's going up, right? So increasing. Um, if the derivative is negative, a function must be decreasing. And this is because um, if the slope of the tangent line is negative, and the function is going down from left to right. So that's what we mean by increasing or decreasing. Okay, so here is a function to the right. Where is f of x increasing? Um, I know I have a parenthesis here. Where is f of x increasing? And I hope we can see that it is increasing to the right of 3. Now, um, I'm going to be using interval notation, and we actually say a function begins increasing when it's like with a closed interval. So we actually usually say that the function is increasing on the uh, function on the interval from three to infinity. This is how we would usually write it. Um, this is in the interval between three and infinity. The function is going to be increasing everywhere when x is to the right of three. Now, uh, this bracket means it includes three, and that's definitional. There are there's a, there are other possible definitions, but this is the one that the AP exam usually uses. Um, there are definitions that could mean like, hey, it doesn't start increasing until after three, but a lot of times when the slope is zero, at that, but it's going up to the right, we consider it to be increasing from three to infinity. Okay, so this is what we'll use. Now, if you put three to infinity, you probably wouldn't lose points um, and you wouldn't on the AP exam, uh, but we'll be doing this. Okay, so where is f prime of x positive? Um, so if a function is increasing, we can tell that its slopes are positive, and this time it'll be everywhere between three and infinity. Um, Again, the slopes are positive um, everywhere to the right of 3. You'll notice that this time I used an open parenthesis here because at x equals 3, the slope is 0. Um, and so even though we say it's increasing starting at 3 and going to the right, um, the derivative is 0 at 3, and it's not positive until you're to the right of 3. I, again, if you put 3 to infinity, nobody's really worried about that one point. It's more the interval that we're um, interested in. Okay, so where is f of x negative? Where is f of x negative? f of x being negative means f of x is less than zero, and um, f of x is less than zero when, it's like saying y is less than zero, um, when it's below the x-axis. So this part of the graph, f of x is negative, and this happens on the interval from 1 to 5. So everywhere between x equals 1 and x equals 5, f of x, the y values, are below 0. Where is f prime of x negative? Now this is not talking about where are the y values are. These are the slopes. So where are the slopes negative? It's a very different question. The slopes are negative when uh, f of x is decreasing. So everywhere to the left of infinity, uh, so from negative infinity until three. So uh, these slopes are negative on this section. That's where the slope of the tangent line is negative. And so everywhere to the left of three. Again, the slope isn't negative at x equals zero. Uh, or at x equals 3 because the slope is 0 and 0 isn't negative or positive. Uh, if I also could have said where is f decreasing, and f would be decreasing on the interval from negative infinity to, to 3, but now we would include the, um, the endpoint. Again, if you don't get the endpoint right, if you put like an open or closed thing, nobody's going to be too mad at you.
All right, so that was looking at a function and seeing what we could tell about the derivative. It didn't tell us the derivative anywhere in here, but we know that the derivative is the slopes. So more commonly on the AP exam, we're gonna be given a graph of a derivative and we want to um, be able to answer things about the function. So this is a graph of the slopes of a function g of x. There's some other function g of x, and we want to answer questions about it. So where is g prime of x negative? This is a graph of g prime of x, and so where is g of x, g prime of x negative? Well, it's negative on the interval from negative infinity to negative three, because at negative three, uh, so this section right here, the function is negative. This is g prime of x being negative. And from, when there's more than one thing, we use a union. And from negative two to zero. So the derivative is negative. So that this is the same as saying g prime of x is less than zero. And it's below zero when x is to the left of negative three or between negative two and zero. Okay, where is g of x decreasing then? So g of x is decreasing. This is not asking where this graph is decreasing. This is not a graph of g of x. This is a graph of the slopes of g of x. There's some other graph of g of x somewhere. And um, we wanna know where that graph is decreasing. And the way we can use it is these are the slopes. And when the slopes are negative, so this is slopes are negative, it's actually a very similar answer to up above. So um, g of x is de decreasing when the slopes are negative. So from negative infinity to negative three, we use a bracket here. It's considered to be um, still decreasing, uh, even at that endpoint. And from negative two to zero, uh, notice that g of x being negative is the same as g, G, sorry, g prime of x being negative is the same as g of x decreasing. These are the same, and it goes back up to that simple sentence we had up there. When the derivative is negative, the function is decreasing. So if we wanna know where a function is decreasing, we just look for where the derivative is negative. Where is g of x increasing? Where is g of x increasing? Now, this is not a graph of g of x. This is a graph of g prime of x. So these are the slopes are positive, right? And this is a graph of the slopes. So we wanna know where g of x is increasing. Well, that's where the slopes are positive. This is a graph of the slopes and the slopes are positive here. And so we're gonna write that g of x is increasing from negative three to negative two and also from zero to infinity. We always write these intervals from left to right. So from negative three to negative two and then from zero to infinity. Those are the x values where, um, where g of x is increasing, okay? Where does g of x change direction? These will just be individual x values where g of x is changing directions. Well, here what I can see is g prime of x is telling us the slopes and the slopes were positive and then they were negative. At x equals negative three, g of x changes directions because the slope went from negative positive. So g of x goes, looks like this at x equals three. This is what g of x must look something like this. Okay. And then at x equals two, negative two, sorry, there's another change in directions where the slope goes from being positive to negative. So g of x changes direction from decreasing to increasing, and then from increasing to decreasing. And then again, uh, it'll change directions at x equals zero. Um, g of x will change from decreasing to increasing because the slope is changing from negative to positive. So we can see where the slope crosses zero to see where g of x changes direction. If the slope changes direction, if the slope changes from negative to positive, g of x will be changing from decreasing to increasing. If the slope changes from positive to negative, uh, then g of x will change from increasing to decreasing and it'll change direction. So. Let's get into our notes from today. Um, by the way, on that warm up, I really hope you did homework 5.0. If you did homework 5.0, you were in great shape to like already feel, be feeling really comfortable with some of these ideas. Um, and if you didn't, well, you know, try to do all the homeworks. They're kind of important. Um, consider the function f of x equals this cubic function. Let's make some 
um, connections between calculus and the graph. So here is a cubic function. We see that nice cubic shape. Let's find the first derivative. Go ahead and find f prime of x um, on your own. And I hope you found that we can just do the product rule. So 3 times 1 third is 1. We don't need to write the 1. Um, x squared, uh, 2, and we lower the power by 1. So we multiply by the power and lower the power by 1. Here we multiply by 2 and lower the power by 1. The derivative of negative 3x is just negative 3. The derivative of x is just 1. And the derivative of a constant is 0. So there's the derivative. And what can we see here? Well, you won't actually usually be given the function. You'll be given the derivative um, a lot of times on the AP exam. Um, or you'll have a function, and we can use the derivative to find out some great things about it, but you won't have a graph because it'll be like no calculator section. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are always going to look for where the derivative is equal to zero. These are called uh, critical points. In fact, do I define this elsewhere? I'm gonna define this now. Critical points are where f prime is equal to zero or f prime is undefined. Um, and the idea is, is critical points are places where the function might switch from being increasing to decreasing. You're never going to be like increasing and all of a sudden be decreasing without either having uh, the slope be zero for a second. This would be like a slope of zero. Or having there be a cusp where, remember we talked about indifferentiable, indifferentiability, the slope is changing from negative to positive and the limit from the left and the right aren't the same, um, both of these could cause a change in direction, which is gonna be a really important feature that we're gonna to wanna to look at. So we're always gonna look for where this is zero. So let's remember our algebra one skills. To find where it's zero, we're gonna to wanna to factor. And, or we also wanna find where it's zero or undefined. Uh, but a, a polynomial is never undefined. It'll be like where we're dividing by zero or something. Um, so this will never be undefined. We just wanna see where it's equal to zero. So what we're gonna do, is we are going to factor f prime of x. Go ahead and factor it on your own. We should get x minus 3, x plus 1, because we're looking for two numbers that multiply to make negative 3 that add to be positive 1, or sorry, add the, that add to be negative 2. So negative 3 times positive 1 gives you negative 3, and negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Um, okay, and so where is this equal to 0? Well, there are critical points. Sometimes we'll say critical values if we're only talking about the x value. Um, so critical points or critical values when this is equal to zero. What are those critical values then? Well, there'll be critical values at x equals three because three minus three is zero or negative one. So x equals three and x equals negative one are the critical values. And what we're going to do is we're going to make something called a sign chart. And what we're going to look at is, at different x values, what is the sign? Um, so by sign, I mean positive or negative sign. Uh, what is the sign of f prime? So these are the slopes. Are the slopes positive or negative? And what we're going to start by doing is putting in our sign chart, we're going to leave a space. And then we're going to put um, the smallest x value that's a critical value. Then we're going to leave a space. And we're going to put the next smallest value, that's the critical value. And if we needed to do more, we would do more. And we're going to say, what's the value of f prime there? Well, when x is negative 1, the reason this is a critical value is because f prime is 0. You could also have a critical value if f, is, f prime is undefined. But in this case, both those critical values had a slope of 0. And what that looks like is like on a graph, there's like a flat section for just a second. Um, and we're going to look to the left everywhere to the left of negative one. We want to know what the derivative is. And so we're going to pick kind of a test value. So I'm going to test like, and you can usually do this in your head, like negative two is to the left. Um, and when we put in negative two, we will get negative two minus three is negative five. And I actually don't care what number it is. It's a negative times when we put in negative two plus one, Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, and that's a negative times a negative, which is a positive. And because these are the only two places where um, f prime of x is 0, how are you going to change from positive 
uh, f prime of x will be positive everywhere to the left of negative 1 because it's never changing from positive to negative without crossing 0. You can't change from positive to negative without crossing 0 or having some place where it's undefined. Um, and so we only need to test a single point, and you can see that every number that is less than negative 1 will give you a negative times a negative. The same is true for numbers in between here. We're going to pick one test point between negative 1 and 3, and I think a good test point here is 0, um, because 0 is between a negative and a positive. And we're going to put in 0 for x to see whether uh, it comes out negative or positive. When we put in 0 here, 0 minus 3 is negative 3. 0 plus 1 is positive 1, and so we get a negative times a positive, which is a negative. And every number between negative 1 and 3 will give us a negative times a positive, and it will end up being a negative. All of the slopes um, of f of x will end up being negative between negative 1 and 3. And again, we know that it won't change signs because we've already put all the places where it's 0 or undefined, so how is it going to switch from negative to positive without, uh, without crossing 0? The last thing we're going to do is we're going to test one point to the right of 3. Um, and so what's a number that's bigger than 3? Pick some number that's bigger than 3 and test it. Hopefully you got that all of the slopes are positive. And if you didn't, let's see how we do it. We pick a number like 5 and we plug it in. 5 minus 3, so I'm going to test any number that's bigger than 3. 5, 6, 7, 100. And when I test it, I will get 5 minus 3, so I'm going to test 5. So 5 minus 3 is 2. 5 plus 1 is 6. Or I could just look at the signs. A positive times a positive will give me a positive. In this case, it's positive 12. And so all of the x values greater than 3 will produce a positive uh, slope. Okay, now let's actually look at the graph. Everywhere to the left of negative 1, the slopes were increasing. Everywhere between negative 1 and 3, the slopes were negative. The function was decreasing. Everywhere to the right of 3, the slopes were positive. The function was increasing. Okay, so we can see that from our sign chart. We can see the connection. And we can make some statements here. There's a bunch of statements we want to be able to make. So we want to say f is increasing on what interval? f is increasing on the interval, all the places where the slopes are positive. So f is increasing on negative infinity to negative 1 union, uh, union 3, sorry, comma, infinity. So this is the interval um, that f is increasing on, from negative infinity to negative 1, and then again from 3 to infinity. Where is f decreasing? f is decreasing on what interval? Well, um, try to do it without looking at the graph, looking at your sign chart here. The slopes, f will be decreasing when f prime is less than 0. f is increasing when f prime is greater than 0. You really want to translate this back and forth in your head. Increasing means f prime is greater than 0. Decreasing means the slopes are less than 0. So f is decreasing when the slopes are less than 0, and that's between negative 1 and 3. So it's uh, decreasing from negative 1 to 3. So that's the interval f of x is decreasing on. Okay, there's another cool thing we can do besides just where is it increasing or decreasing, although that's, you know, nice information. At the place where it changes direction, we can find whether f has a local minimum or a local maximum. Um, a local maximum is a point that's higher than all the points are around it, and that will happen when f prime changes from positive to negative. So um, in this case, at x equals negative 1, so f has a local maximum, means it's higher than all the other points around it. Local means nearby. Is it the highest point? No, there's like other points higher over here. But it's higher than the points near it at x equals negative 1. And f has a local min 
or minimum, you can write it out, or you can use min or max as a shortcut version of writing it. Everybody would understand that. F has a local min at x equals what? So at x equals 3, we can see it here on the graph. But without the graph, which is what you would, you wouldn't have it. You would have like this equation, you would find the derivative, you would make the sign chart. We can see that f prime is changing from negative to positive. And I hope we see why this works. If the slopes were positive, and then they become zero, and then they become negative, that's going to make a local maximum. If the slopes were negative, and then they become zero, and then they become positive, then that will be a local minimum. So we'll talk in just a minute about justifications and what you need to write. A lot of this will come up on the um, free response portion of the AP exam, which means you need to be able to write out a justification for it. And I'll explain exactly what that should look like. Okay, so um, let's do this on our own and see if we can take it a step further by doing the justifications. Okay, determine the derivative of this function. Go ahead and do that on your own. So f prime of x equals, and here we get uh, the power rule says we multiply by 5. Multiplying by 5 and dividing by 5 will cancel out. We'll get 2x to the 4th minus here, multiplying by 4 will give us 12 over 2, which is 6, x to the third, and 8x, okay? Uh, I'm going to factor out uh, 2 here, so this is 2x times uh, x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4, and uh, we want to factor this further. We want to factor it all the way, and so let's remember from Algebra 2, we learned how to factor cubics by doing uh, long division. We're just going to test numbers until we can find one that makes this zero. Remember, they have to be factors of this. So the only options are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4. Um, one of these values has to make this equal to zero or it's not factorable. So when I plug in the number 1, I get 1 minus 3 plus 4 is 2. When I plug in negative 1, I get negative 1 minus 3 plus 4 is 0. And so I'm going to, I, I know that uh, negative 1 is a 0, and so x plus 1 must be a factor. So I'm going to do x plus 1, I'm going to do it below here, is a factor. So that means that um, x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4 is going to split up into x plus 1 times something. And, and I know that must be true because when I plugged in negative 1, I got 0. And so when I plug in negative 1, um, that will make this 0. So x plus 1 is going to divide into x cubed minus 3x squared. Remember, we need to leave a space here. Um, this is 0 x's. x goes into x cubed x squared times. And then we take x squared and we multiply it times each of these. x squared times x is x cubed x squared times 1 is x squared, and we subtract. x cubed minus x cubed is 0. That will always happen. Minus x squared, so negative 3x squared minus x squared is negative 4x squared. And um, then x goes into, uh, I guess we can bring everything down if we want. x goes into negative 4x squared, negative 4x times, um, negative 4x times uh, x plus 1 is negative 4x squared. I guess I should do this in red since I did the other one in red. Negative 4x squared. Negative 4x times 1 is negative 4x. And we are subtracting. When we subtract a negative, that's adding. And so negative 4x squared plus 4x squared is 0. 0 minus a negative is plus. Oh, you guys can't see this. Oh, no. Um, so minus negative 4x is plus 4x, and we get 4x plus 4. We're going to bring down the 4. x goes into 4x four times, and 4 will distribute to both of these. 4 times x plus 1 is 4x plus 4, and when we subtract, we get 0, which means we did our long division correctly because it should go in evenly. So um, this splits up into... I guess I should say it's x plus 1 times x squared minus 4x plus 4. And now that it's a quadratic, we can just factor it easily. So this is x minus 2 times x minus 2, because negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, and they add to be um, negative 4. And so we get um, this whole thing 
factors into, uh, we factored out the 2x, and then this cubic split into um, x plus 1 times x minus 2 squared. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a sign chart. Um, let's make a sign chart. Let's say, uh, what is the lowest value that makes the derivative zero? Well, the lowest value that makes this zero is negative one. So skip a space, make negative one. Skip a space, we're gonna put the next lowest value of the derivative, that's zero. We're gonna skip a space, and we're gonna put the highest value, which is two. Okay, we're gonna pick one number to the left of negative one. When I pick a number to the left of negative one, like, I don't know, negative two. I get two times negative two is a negative. Uh, negative two plus one is a negative. Negative two minus two is negative four, but negative four squared is a positive. So I get a negative times a negative times a positive, and that is a positive, okay? Um, what about a number? Uh, oh, sorry, I forgot to put in the sign chart that all of these values are zero. So when x is negative one, the derivative is zero. When x is zero, the derivative is zero. When x is two, the derivative is zero. These are my three critical values or critical points will happen when x is negative one, when x is zero, and when x is two. Um, and we can see at x is negative one, the slope is zero. At x is zero, the slope is zero. At x equals two, the slope is zero. Those are my critical values. Um, what about when x is between negative one and zero, like negative one half? Um, two times negative one half is a negative. Negative one half plus one is a positive. Uh, negative one half minus two is negative 2.5, but negative 2.5 squared, a negative times a negative will give me a positive. In fact, anytime you square something, it will always be a positive. So you don't even need to like plug in the number there. You could just be like, oh, it's squared, it's positive. Okay, um, so we get a negative times a positive times a positive. If there's an odd number of negatives, that means that uh, it multiplies out to be a negative. So um, how about at x equals zero? Uh, between x equals zero and x equals two, maybe like one, I'll, t I'll plug in one. Two times one is two, which is a positive. One plus one is two, which is a positive. And anything squared is always a positive. So um, a positive times a positive times a positive is a positive. And we may have noticed that it switches a lot. Positive, negative, positive, positive, negative, positive. But be careful, it doesn't always switch. Um, when we pick a number greater than two, uh, like seven or something, we get a positive times a positive, which is a positive. Two, seven plus one is eight, which is a positive. Seven minus two is five, five squared is a positive. And we get a positive times a positive times a positive, which is still a positive. Notice it did not switch signs. Um, in fact, it won't switch signs at uh, any values where it's in even power, um, because even powers don't switch signs, they're just always positive. So, you know, we could have told in advance that like, once you check one, you're gonna be like, oh, it's gonna switch, it's gonna switch, it's not gonna switch because of that even power. I don't know if you remember back in Algebra 2 um, when we were graphing, we talked about multiplicity and we said that if it uh, had a multiplicity of two or four, it would like bounce off um, and not switch signs. So that's what's going on there. Okay, so <clears throat> now we can find the critical, we found the critical values. I guess we should actually answer the question. The critical values are x equals zero, x equals negative one, x equals two. What are these critical values? Are they a local minimum, a local maximum, or are they neither? Well, looking at the graph, we can see that x is, x equals negative one is a local, which one? Is it a local min or a local max? That's a local max. x equals zero is a local min, and x equals two is neither. It's not lower than or higher than the points on either side. It's, it just keeps increasing, uh, kind of like a cubic parent function. Um, <clears throat> so all critical points will either be maximums, minimums, or sometimes they will be neither. Um, how can we do it just by looking at the sign chart if we don't have the graph? Well, 
this is where we're going to start learning about how to justify on the AP exam. So <clears throat> to prove that something is a local minimum or maximum, we need to write a sentence. And what we'll say is at x equals negative 1, f has a, so at x equals negative 1, f has a local max or a local maximum because f prime changes from positive to negative. You're welcome to write um, positive with it circled and negative with it circled to show a positive sign, or you can write out positive and negative here. And this makes it be a local maximum because the slope is changing from positive to negative, and so it will be higher than all the points above it. And that should make sense, right? If, if a slope changes from positive to negative, you will always have a local maximum. Um, this is the sentence you need to be able to write, and we're going to need to practice it because this is like exactly what needs to be written. Like you can put maximum instead of max. Um, you can also put the word relative instead of local. Um, relative and local maximums mean the same thing. Um, but like basically you need this exact sentence. So try covering it up, saying it to yourself for a second. Like how do we prove that at x equals 1, uh, f has a local max? F has a local max because f prime changes from positive to negative. Okay. At x equals 0, f has a local or relative. I like writing local because it's a shorter word, but it means the same thing. A local min because, try to write this on your own. Because what? Well, what you need to write on the AP exam is at x equals 0, f has a local min because f prime changes from negative to positive. And this should make sense. The slopes were going from negative to positive, and so this will be a lowest, a point lower than all the other ones. Um, at x equals 2, f has neither a local min nor max. If you're uncomfortable with like this English, you can change this part a little bit um, to say like at x equals 2, f has neither a local min minimum or a local maximum. It's okay. Like they're not going to get you on this part. They really care about this because you can use b slash c for because. That's okay. Because <clears throat> f prime does not change sign. At x equals 2, f prime stayed positive. Uh, we call it not changing sign. It didn't change from negative to positive or positive to negative. It didn't change sign, and so there won't be a local minimum or a maximum. So <clears throat> let's kind of summarize everything into one big table. This is a like kind of the thing you want to have like super memorized. Um, if a derivative is positive, what does that tell you about the function? The function is increasing. And this should make sense. If the derivative is positive, the slope is positive. The function is increasing. If the derivative is negative, the function is decreasing. Uh, when the slope is zero, or I'm going to say undefined also. If the slope is zero or undefined, then uh, f has a critical point, has a critical value, and maybe a local min or max. But be careful here. Just because the derivative is zero doesn't mean there's a local min or max. It could just be like taking a break for a second and then keeps going up, and so there is a, min a minimum or a maximum. So we need to do some more work to see if there's a, a min or max, but there's definitely a critical value or a critical point, we could say. Critical value or critical point. Okay, if f prime changes from positive to negative, so the slope changes from positive to negative, then f, f will have a what? f will have a local max. If f prime changes from negative to positive, then if the slopes change from negative to positive, then f will have a local min. And again, we can say relative min or relative max here. This is also fine.
Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to translate into a derivative statement. We want to translate from f to f prime. f is increasing in our heads. When we see f is increasing, we want to think f prime is greater than zero. If you want to know if f, f is increasing, you check the derivatives above zero. It's going to be really easy to do. By the way, guys, in Algebra 2, when you guys were learning Algebra 2, I like was doing a bunch of shortcut things that you guys didn't know how to do because I could just like very quickly see the derivative of something and then see if the slope was positive or not. And it makes it like really easy to do a lot of earlier math um, that I'm not going to go back and show you. But, you know, if you ever go back to earlier math, knowing that <clears throat> the slope is positive is way easier than actually dealing with the function sometimes. So f has a local minimum. How do we translate that into words? This is f prime changes from negative to positive. Um, and, and this is because um, this is because the slope has to change from negative to positive to make there be a local minimum. So this is what we want to translate these statements into. If f has a horizontal tangent line, we want to translate that into what statement about the derivative? f prime is equal to zero. The slope is zero, that's a horizontal tangent line. Uh, I don't know what has is decreasing. f is decreasing is f prime is less than zero. Okay, so hopefully we're feeling good about um, this box. This box is important. This is what we can tell from the derivative. And um, let's see how we can use it. So here is a function. We don't have a graph this time. We want to start by finding the critical values. Start by translating this into calculus. Oh, you guys can't see that. I'm so sorry. Um, we have a function. We don't have a graph this time, but we can tell a lot of things about that graph by using the derivative. So what are the critical values? What is the definition of that? Well, we're looking for where f prime of x is zero or undefined. In this case, polynomials will never have undefined because you're never going to be like dividing by zero or something. So how do we find the critical values? We're going to set this equal to zero. Um, first, find the derivative and then set it equal to zero. You actually get points on the AP exam for showing that you've set it equal to zero. So make sure you do that. So what is f prime of x? f prime of x is, well, this is a quick power rule, 6x squared plus 6x minus 36. We're just multiplying by the power and lowering the power by 1. And now this is important. We want to make sure we set this equal to 0 to show that we are um, that we know what a critical value is. You, you get points on this on the AP exam sometimes for actually having set it's equal to 0. Um, now, how do we find where it's equal to 0? Well, we want to factor this. Go ahead and factor this fully. So we're going to factor out the 6 because they all have a 6. So 6 times x squared is 6x squared, 6 times x is 6x, and 6 times negative 6 is um, negative 36. And we are going to factor this more. We need two numbers that multiply to make negative 6 that add to be 1. So plus 3 and minus 2, they multiply to make negative 6 and add to be positive 1. And so now I can find the critical values. The critical values are where is this equal to 0. 6 will never be equal to 0 but x can be negative 3, or x can be 2. Now, what is the justification? How do we write out a sentence? We say f has critical values at x equals negative 3 and 2 because, here's the important part, so f has critical values at x. You need to write this whole sentence, be able to write this whole sentence. f has critical values at x equals negative 3 and 2 because f prime of x equals 0 at these values. So when f prime was 0, it means the slope is horizontal. And these might be places where the function is changing direction. And in fact, I can tell because they aren't in even power that they will change directions there. So now, find the coordinates. Coordinates mean an x and a y of the relative maxima, which means uh, where's the relative maxima is the plural of maximum. It's just saying if there's more than one um, maximum, we need to find all the coordinates there. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to make a sign chart. So x, f prime. Uh, go ahead and try to fill this out on your own. See if you feel good about it. All right, 
uh, hopefully you started by leaving a space and then we always start with the lowest one. You can't put two first. The order matters. We have to go from lowest to highest. Then we leave a space and we put positive two and these will both be zero. This is where the derivative is zero. We already found. And so we're going to check a point to the left and in between and to the right. When we check a point to the left of negative three, this is something like negative four. Check it in the factored form. We get a positive. Negative four plus three is a negative. So this is always going to be positive times a negative. Negative four minus two is a negative. So there are two negatives. That makes a positive. Okay. Pick a point between negative three and two. Maybe something like zero. It's halfway. It's between negatives and positives. We'll get a positive times a positive times a negative. That is a negative because there's one negative. And we can tell that this is going to switch because there was only uh, one thing. I, I could just text a number bigger than two, but there was no squared or cubed or anything here, and so I can just know it's going to switch. Okay, um, so with that in mind, where is the relative maximum? What are we looking for here? Translate this into calculus. Relative maximums happen when f prime changes from what? From positive to negative, because that's where the slope goes from positive to negative, and that will be a maximum point. It'll be higher than all the other points around it. And that happens at x equals negative three. So x equals negative three. Try to write a justification on your own. This is like the key thing we gotta get good at. So f, uh, what is our justification? So we wanna say f, uh, oh wait, we haven't actually answered the question. It said find the coordinates of the relative maximum. Usually we're just finding the x-coordinate, but in this case they specifically said coordinates. So we're going to take negative 3 and we're going to plug it back in. Are we going to plug it into the derivative? No, that will tell us the slope, not the coordinates. And I already know the slope is 0. Um, I want to know what the y value is, and so I need to plug in negative 3 back into the original function. So f of negative 3 is... Um, I need to plug it back into this original function to find the y value. Remember, the original function is about the x's and the y's. The derivative is about the slopes. So if I want an x and a y, I need to go back to this original function. So 2 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 is negative 27. 2 times negative 27 is negative 54. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9 times 3 is 27. Negative 3 times uh, negative 36, I believe, is positive 108. So this is uh, 108. This is minus 27. 108 minus 27 is 81. Um, so the coordinates are negative 3, 81. Usually, just finding the x value is good enough. Um, if they say where or when, those are just x values. Here they said find the coordinates of the relative maximum, and so we actually need to plug back into the original function to find the y value. So f has a relative max at negative 381. I'm making sure I'm answering this question. By the way, you saw I like forgot it for a second until I was going to write my sentence. And when I wrote my sentence, I'm answering the question, find the coordinates of the relative maximum. f has a relative maximum at this point and you need the because here. Because what? Because f prime changes from uh, positive to negative. Cool, that's it. If f prime changes from positive to negative, there must be a relative maximum. That's how we knew. All right, last, determine the intervals for which f of x is increasing. Where is f of x increasing? So translate this into calculus first. Whenever you see a statement about f, translate what would that mean in terms of the derivative. If f is increasing, then f prime is greater than zero. It's positive. So we need f prime has to be positive. Um, we've already made our sign chart, and we can see where f prime is positive. It's here and here. So what are the intervals? Go ahead and try to write it and write your sentence all at once. Try to write it on your own. So f is increasing on the interval from negative infinity to uh, negative three, that's where it stops being positive, union um, two, comma, infinity. 
Again, if you have the endpoints wrong, if you had put a parentheses instead of a bracket, uh, you won't lose points. They, they don't care that much about the endpoints in this course because there are different definitions you could use. So F is increasing on these intervals because what? Because F prime is greater than zero. Okay, that's where F prime is greater than zero. All right, determine the intervals for which g of x equals this guy is increasing and decreasing. Where is g of x increasing? And justify it on your own, okay? So how do we tell if g of x is increasing or decreasing? Well, we need to find the derivative. So the derivative is what? The derivative is um, the derivative of 200 is zero. The derivative of 8x cubed is 24x squared. The derivative of x fourth is 4x cubed. And always we will factor this. So this, I can factor out of 4x squared, and I will get um, 6 plus x. So where are the critical values? The critical values, the critical values are when x is 0 and when x equals negative 6. 6 plus negative 6 is 0. 4 times 0 is 0. Um, notice when we factored out the 6, 0 doesn't make it 0, but when we factor out 4x, that will make it 0. Also notice that this one has a multiplicity of 2. It will not change signs there. So let's make our sign chart. So g prime, make sure, make sure your sign chart is well labeled. Go ahead and make it on your own. Uh, at different x values, what is the value, what is the sign of g prime? Um, so uh, we start from lowest to highest. So leave a space, negative 6. And at negative 6, g prime was 0. Leave a space and 0. And at 0, g prime was 0. And now we're going to do a test point. When x is less than negative 6, like negative 7, we get uh, this will always be a positive because it's squared. So we get a positive times 6 plus negative 7 is a negative. Positive times a negative is a negative. When we're between negative 6 and 0, I can tell it's going to switch signs here. I know it's going to be positive, but let's just ch check one just in case, like negative 2. So if I pick negative 2, that's between negative 6 and 0. Um, negative 2 squared will be a positive. 6 plus negative 2 is a positive. And I knew it was going to um, switch signs here because this does not have any multiplicity. Last... Uh, when it switches, when it goes to the other side of zero, so any number bigger than zero, I know will also be a positive. I know it won't switch signs because of this multiplicity of two. Um, it's an even number. Whenever this is even, it won't switch signs because it will always be positive. Um, when x is greater, but let's test the point. Let's pick on like three. Three is a number bigger than zero. We'll get a positive. Six plus three is a positive. Positive times a positive is a positive. So where is f of x decreasing and increasing. Let's write a sentence. F is increasing on what interval? Well, here, again, you could do it in multiple intervals, but we should do it in just the smallest interval possible. Remember how I told you how when it's zero, it doesn't actually stop increasing? Because what it looks like is it kind of looks, it's like increasing and then it keeps increasing. And so even though the slope is zero, this is considered to be increasing. Um, and so we can just say, this whole range, so from negative six to infinity, the function is increasing. Even though it's zero here and here, we can include those endpoints. Now, if you put um, negative six to zero, union, zero come infinity, this isn't wrong, it's just a longer way of writing it. And if it was multiple choice, which I believe this came from a multiple choice problem, this would be um, how it was written, okay? Write it on your own. What about where f is decreasing? f is decreasing on the interval. What are we looking for? We're looking for where the slope is negative. The slope is negative when we're to the left of negative 6, which is from negative infinity to negative 6. So f is decreasing. Oh, we didn't write our justification. So up here, f is increasing because f prime was greater than 0. f is decreasing because f prime is less than 0. So easy justifications. Something is decreasing when the slopes are negative. Something is increasing when the slope is positive. And that should make a lot of sense. Okay. Um, F is... Uh, we've got this harder one now. Okay, so this one's a little bit trickier. Uh, I see this x minus 3 here in the denominator. And so this should bring up 
alarm bells in your head. It's not just where the derivative is zero. Remember, we're also looking for f prime is undefined. So where is f prime undefined? Um, it's undefined at x equals three. Um, this already is the derivative. It's giving us the derivative and it's asking about where f is decreasing. So let's translate. f is a function. f is decreasing. Translate that into calculus. What does that mean about the derivative? If f is decreasing, f prime is less than zero. On what interval? So we need to find where f is less than zero. Now we need to find all the critical points to be able to make a sign chart. So x, f prime. Um, I know x equals three is a critical point because f is f prime is undefined there. But what about when it's zero? Well, let's factor the numerator. This is absolute value of, uh, this is difference of two squares. It's three minus x times three plus x. Um, and I can see that when x is three, um, that's a critical value, we already had that one. And when x equals negative three, that's a critical value as well. So let's do when x is negative three. Uh, when x is negative three, f prime is zero. And when x is positive three, it's undefined. There's actually a hole there, okay? Uh, you won't get marked wrong for like what's here. Like they really care about this sentence. This sentence is where you're getting your points. Okay, so when we're to the left of negative three, now guys, here we can't really use the multiplicity to tell if it changes signs or not. We're actually gonna need to check all of these places because this is a little bit more complicated. So pick a number less than negative three. Let's go with um, uh, negative four or something. And when we test it, we'll get, uh, I don't even care what this is because the absolute value is around it. So this whole absolute value will always be a positive. So we'll get positive divided by, when x is negative four, we get negative four minus three is negative seven. And so we get a positive divided by a negative. Positive divided by a negative is a negative. How about a number in between, like zero? When we plug in the top, it's gotta be a positive because absolute value of anything is positive. Um, zero minus three is a negative and we get a positive over a negative again, which is a negative. It did not switch signs there. And what about to the right of three? Let's pick a number like seven. Uh, the top will always be positive because it's absolute value. So positive divided by seven minus three is four, which is a positive. Um, a positive divided by a positive is a positive. And with the sign chart, I can now see all the places where the slopes are negative or positive, and I can find where F is decreasing. F is decreasing when F prime is less than zero. And so F is decreasing on what interval? It's uh, going from negative infinity until three. So from parentheses, we always, we always use in parentheses for infinity. So from negative three until uh, three. Um, F is decreasing. You may notice I, um, I didn't put a bracket here. It's because it's undefined at the end. If you put a bracket, you wouldn't lose any points. It's fine. Um, F is decreasing on this interval. Why? because f prime is less than or equal to zero. Oh guys, I should have been putting less than or equal to zero, not uh, less than zero. Um, because sometimes it's equal to zero and it's still increasing. So when the derivative is in, it, we should be putting f prime is less than or equal to zero in our justifications. Oh my gosh, this was so sloppy guys. Greater than or equal to zero, greater than or equal to zero. Um, so we're really looking for like greater than or equal to zero. Um, okay, and so on this chart in the front, we should put or zero, negative or zero. So it's not just where it's positive or negative, it's, it's negative or zero, it could be increasing or decreasing. Okay, on this interval. If you don't have this, this is okay. Like this part is okay not to have. F is decreasing on this interval because F prime is less than or equal to zero. Great. Last question. Oh, you need a calculator for this. So get your calculator out. Here's the first derivative. Where is F between zero and two? Where is F increasing? And this might look hard and it's super not. Go ahead and try it on your own. So here is, we're just gonna graph it. And what are we looking for? When we're looking for F is increasing, we're just looking for F prime is greater than or equal to zero. And so we're just going to graph f prime, and we're going to see where is it greater than or equal to zero. And what we're going to look for is on the graph, we're going to look for where, uh, we're going to change our window to match. 
Notice it says from zero to two. So we're gonna make our window go from zero. X goes from zero, the X min is zero, and the X max is gonna be two. And if we just care about whether it's positive or negative, I usually just go like from negative two to two on Y, so it's not too high or too low. And I can see it's positive between here and here. Um, we do need a calculator skill to be able to find where that zero is. Um, I like to put Y equals zero in also, and just find the intersection. So we press second, calc, intersect, enter, 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 and it'll say that the, uh-oh, what? I mean, it's, these definitely intersect. Why is it saying they don't intersect? Uh, maybe it ran out of space and I need to go closer. I've never had this happen to me. So enter, enter, let's put my guess a little bit closer. Okay, now it found it. So uh, that's super weird. Um, so it's positive from x equals 1.442 until whatever this other intersection is. So second calc intersect, enter, enter. I need to move my guess over to here. Enter 1.875, so it's this one. So um, <clears throat> f is increasing on this interval because that's where f prime was above zero. And on a calculator, you do need to be able to find where the derivative is zero um, and where it's above zero. And I, I like just putting y equals zero here and finding the intersection. You could have also used um, the in the calculate button. So press second calc, you can use the zero function. And that asks you to, it finds a zero, you put one thing to the left of it. You press enter when it's to the left of it, it says left bound. You go to the left of the zero and press enter. You go to the right of the zero and you press enter. Um, and it'll tell you where that zero is. And this, if you do it that way, you don't need to put in y equals zero there. You can still find the zero. So where is the zero? Well, let's go to the left of our other zero. So this is the left of the zero. This is to the right of the zero. And then you press enter and it'll find the zero for you. So there's the zero. Um, <clears throat> so there we are. Guys, this is a super important topic. Again, it all comes down to the simple sentence in the warmup which is that the derivative tells us the slopes of the tangent lines. If the derivative is positive, the function is increasing. If the derivative is negative, the function is decreasing. And based on that, we can tell if a function is increasing or decreasing. We can also tell where there are minimums and maximums. And this becomes really important in economics, in business where you wanna find the maximum amount of money you can make, in engineering when you wanna find like the maximum load an elevator can take where it will break. Um, you can tell maximums and minimums by finding where the derivative changes sign from positive to negative. It's a really cool technique. This is called the first derivative test. You aren't taking a test. It means using the derivative to test what's going on in the function. Specifically, finding local minimums and maximums is called the first derivative test. So um, don't think we have a test. I mean, this will be on a test. We'll have a quiz, um, I believe, coming up next class. Um, at the end of next class. Um, but the first derivative test is using the derivative to test what's going on um, at different places. Hopefully you feel good about this. Uh, this is a really important unit. Don't fall behind on it. Make sure you're getting your homework done each day. Um, this is a large part of the AP exam uh, because it's an important application. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye.